Good morning, everyone. It is Monday, July 20th. We have a lot to cover today, so we will try and make this as expedient as possible. Unfortunately, the unveiling of the school reopening plans is not happening today. There were some technical difficulties with the conference call on Friday with some of the regional DEAs. The Department of Education is rescheduling those for the next day or two, and we hope to be able to unveil the final plan uh, later this week. Um, I'll keep everybody updated on the uh, media availability for that. This morning, Minister Hicks is going to give the usual COVID uh, overview. Minister Achiago will speak about uh, a new initiative for Nunavut's tourism and cultural industries. And then Minister Hicks will return to speak in his role as Minister of Health uh, about the isolation hubs. I think there's also going to be a lot of questions on several different topics today. So we are going to go and cycle through the outlets. One question, one follow up, and then start from the beginning. Thanks, everyone. Ulla sakut ulumi July twenty ulumi house itse hakto mga yulang ayub kila may yuga sa tita yulang ayub galawat kisay ni ugur nagtuta ko ilin na bi matulang ningin ni sulu house yugun na jangin man nuna ilin ilin na tulong ayub katim ay ngi katim makatao tilug ay kaung ilin ayub tayo mata ilin na nilug ayub tapani pina sa house yung manalo na yuksiya kanila at Minister Hicks nawat yaw na mechano house halaw luni Minister Hayag pulag at tulong na makalim alang ayub Tano kalimak ka nito kung minister na ang nangitulog ng muta makuwag inutuview kay nagahak to mitsano ulo may apat kutit sa kalang ng balay matwalo at ako siya pero sa katalo tiyam maluking uniago apat sa kanilang nagsa katalang ayo. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. We have a lot of announcements today, so I'll speak very briefly in, in this capacity. This, there are still two present presumptive cases of COVID-19 at the Mary River Mine as we still await results from the Southern Lab. The total number of persons followed to date is 1,629 and there are 179 persons currently being followed. Last week, Canada's Premiers and the Federal Government author authorized to Canada's Safe Restart Agreement. Nunavut will receive up to $18.9 million in federal support, and this will include a cash transfer of $12.1 million, as well as $5.7 million for testing and personal protective equipment procured by the Government of Canada. And there will also be $1.1 million in sick leave benefits for Nunavut to be administered in a federal program. Further details on when and how we will receive this money are, are coming soon. And we are excited to work with our federal and territorial colleagues on the next steps for support specific to the north. Thank you. Ulla sakut ulu mea misuni na luna yagat sa hagtugo tay mga kila mga gasoan na akong tako sulima ko pasagi yao yuno vajua na tuli nineteen minulu yao yagat na abinga ni sulu takhigat takal luna ni luna tayo gasoan ng ini katilima tugi ulu mga yao yagat tayo si mayo one thousand six hundred twenty nine. Malutako 179 suli utak kiyavu. Pinasuha ko si Uyuyo may kanata may sibul at tingi gawa matuhak kulo ang iksila uktu kanata may pigat at sikan ng nagmot ang irutimik. Nuna vuki na uyaktaan na atut 18.9 million gawa matuhak kunik. Tako a kasi ulo titunayaw na atut 12.1 million ang malo 5.7 million kawi sa rutinot ang malo timimot sa pumbiyaw gutini ni uvaktaw si mayo ni kanata o gawa makungin nut. Amalo 1.1 million ane ayon nuri ka kutiu kay na hatak tunik ka yusya nuna bumiunut aula tau ni alun ni gawa matuhak kunut dalun ay yarutik kan ni amalo kanu ka ko kina o yai pinya pinya ni mga atan dalun ay kira kan nila tapuman na mga kuya atugu gawa matuhak kupili ng hatigu na hatigu amalo abit to si maniuyut kung ulang mekano ikayok tau gunda kan ng mga ata upiok tak tumiyo. Ulla sekut nuna bumi okatika aliane aliane ulumi okatila guna semaga mata bunga ilisinu kue setiap bunga dah nela sakti sakti ni agat tigo tabani pulak pulak tulang ini mut tua ngajemin dah nak kue setiap bunga sakti ni agat tigo ikat lebih kur dah nak kadunat itu sah nuna bu dah siye dah nak kau ini Titiya kan nato takuan nami nunavo iluan itu ni New Jersey, Pilih Jersey, amalo kano at atuin nak takam makian nunavo meutanun. Takuan Pilih katigit itu tigun nunavo kolagatilagi kun amalo 
Kak pivot dia yang lagi nampak katuk jahat lagi, dah nak ikat yau lagi nasuk tahu, nuna vomit, nampi nak tu nun, mikit tu tu nun, amalu pola kat pola kat ini kamera kat tak tu nih, dah nana waktu awal nineteen pit sakia tu dulu, dah mana tu dulu, atau se atau se atau se orang mod doa ngaji mod sakia tu tigo maga sakia tu tina sukat tak tak kuat. Kisah ini nuna wo iloan ini atau ini nak tak memakian, tanah negeri kita wo tanah sakyat di kata negara kita wo 2020 isu isu lega sunningan ini, tanah sya nuna wo dah cie sakyat di tio nuna wo mewatno kisah ini atau ini nak memakian, amalu tabah ini nuna wo iloan ini anak kasih mati alu si kita tiak kui luta, tamak kuat di jom mewi Nous avons mis, nous réactons vite, nous avons mis tout. Un malon qui co a tué une arme qui a enlevé des tracteurs de mon. Ça n'a pas été un malon qui t'a réactif non. T'as quoi nous avons mis dans nos pieds une matière on a réactif. T'as quoi il a sa créativité à se cultiver. Nous avons mis pour la gratitude ni comme il y a eu il a été cultivé. T'as ma quoi sa créativité pour les arts se cultiver. Kesuai itu yang amat kita nuna vo nuna kot nuna lekoting ini tak kuat kita lewat kot sakia tiada sunyi atau tak makuat kena kot itu yang amat kita. Pilih layar layar ini ini kayu layar ini ngah suka tak kuat pilih hati kita vote nuna vo me pola hati amalu pilih layar layar ini mod kat pilih layar layar ini mod kat objek hati kita tak kuat. In namun, nuna boleh luar ni tu ni. Ni over, ni over asuhat, ni over asu kanan ni. Ni 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 kini luar tu nak tu ni. Amalu namun, pola katingu kau nak lusi. Tapi mana itu lugu? Ati awalah kata resi, tama kuat lo. Kau yang mayok tu aku tiba. Awalah namun, ilagi ya. Tili tili aw yang nak pada, apa kau apa kau yang kata lusi? Tanda nuna boleh lugu lo. Tak kau minat tuk tua garam, tapi yang tua garam malu dan nak kimi kimi kuat tiap lusiung. Tapi banilu angun asuk ti nek 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 ingin ni ni wakas sukat tangan sana waktu ni lu amalu adi itu ni. Tapi banil anak kasih ni ada bisu ni tamak kuninga pina sukat tangan apa siung. Tak kau api mak tua garam mata tak kau nampi nak kotili nuna vomit. Tetapi nanti di luar tanah aksong nam nau di luar ikan yang kita gigiti ada koyan nami. As part of the recovery and resilience release resiliency plan for tourism and culture industries, I am very pleased to launch of shopnunavut.ca, a platform highlighting local products, services. Experiences that are available to Nunavut Mute. Development in partnership with Destination Nunavut, Travel Nunavut, and the Nunavut Economic Development Association, shopnunavut.ca aims to help Nunavut small businesses and tourism community through the COVID-19 pandemic by providing one-stop shop for all various products and services available in the territory. The platform will be active until end of 2020. Once on shopnunavut.ca, Nunavut Mute will have access to a variety of services such as Stay Nunavut, which provides information on accommodations throughout the territory. Eat Nunavut, a comprehensive list of restaurants and information on tour operators, outfitters, artists, and craftspeople through Enjoy Nunavut. Also, shop Nunavut.ca. Nunavut Mute will have access to existing new websites developed by tra Travel Nunavut. Staycation Nunavut.ca provides up to date trip planning resource information on what tourism opportunity exists through the territory. The website also provides for a space for Nunavut's tourism operators to showcase and advertise new packages offering explicitly tailored to local and northern audience. 
On behalf of the Department of Economic Development and Transportation, our partners, Destination Nunavut, Travel Nunavut, and Nunavut Economic Development Association, I I am encourage, I encourage all residents to take advantage of this opportunity to use shopnunavut.ca to buy local, eat local, and take part in local tourism activities that are available. Go out on the land with local experts and learn about Inuit culture. Discover the wildlife and the beautiful landscape that unique territory has to offer. Purchase local harvested country food and support local artists by purchasing authentic Nunavut art or to enhance your home, your office, and your place of business. Local businesses make our communities more sustainable and plays an important role in the economy and keep our culture and tradition alive for all of us to enjoy. Shop Nunavut helps our local businesses thrive. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to take this opportunity to address the misinformation currently going on around about our isolation hubs. The government of Nunavut is managing several hubs and dealing with a large number of requests from both medical and non-essential travellers. In an attempt to help clear up some of the delays to get into the hubs, Iqaluit is being looked at as one of several options to help relieve the wait time for medical travellers in Winnipeg. This has not been finalized and we are actively looking at the possibility of creating a second hub in Winnipeg specifically for medical travellers. Our commitment is to ensure that our medical travellers are well cared for and we are prior, prioritizing their stays above non-essential travelers. Tamanatukisinaki <laughs> We understand the concerns raised on social media over the weekend. However, nothing has been confirmed about an Iqaluit or additional Winnipeg hub at this time. We recognize the fear and uncertainty that comes with COVID-19. However, we need to balance that fear with facts. The best possible care for Nunavimu and our commitment to public health and safety. When there is an official course of action on this, we will announce it with all the relevant information. As we work to relieve this backlog, we thank those waiting for a spot in the isolation hubs for their patience and understanding, and we are working around the clock to keep our territory and Nunavut safe. I'd like to take this time to thank all the staff who worked so hard to keep everyone well during this COVID-19. Thank you. Tokisu <laughs> Amalepigi 
ikka yokta gurna khulugit <laughs> khujan na mer tavute ko taqiyut ini ta gaswati nu tu viu juni utaqiyut na tsanga ta tu kisi ma tsanga talo ikka kaga sangne pilere khatta khatta nu na vum amalu nu na vum me uluga na tu me lekhuna git khujan na me gum yakke khana yakte li ma tsu te khasma yu tam tamako ke kule ma khanu ite le khulugit nu vajua na main kin lere tilota Kent Driscoll, EPTN National News. Uh, Minister Hicks, when you started your statement, you said you wanted to clear up some misinformation. And then you went on to describe that you're considering using a Calaweed as a hub. What was the mis what was the misinformation? Kent Driscoll, EPTN, could not talk about this. It's a guy who made a bit of a quote. I'm not sure you know. Hello, I'm not sure you know. Okay, now that you're looking, this is a quote. I'm not sure you know. Okay, we get. Thanks for the question, Kent. There was a perception out in the public that it was a done deal, that there was a, f a flight coming tomorrow from Winnipeg, bringing people into into Iqaluit for medical travel in, in Winnipeg, and that's not the case. I've been hearing from people who say that they've heard back from the government of Nunavut that they'll be able to do their isolation in a Calaweet. How far along is this plan? Again, thanks for the question, Kent. Uh, uh, I guess in a nutshell, uh, late last week, as we've been talking about the overflow in, in Winnipeg, uh, there's a high demand and people are having to wait uh, up to three weeks uh, for, for a spot in the isolation hub. So we've been looking at different options. So as you can imagine, it would be a very complex uh, issue, same as when we set up the isolation hubs initially in the southern uh, facilities. So one of the first things we wanted to do was communicate with the medical travelers to see if it was even an option to, on their part. Uh, to go forward. So that's what initiated, I think, a lot of the social media uh, coverage on it, if you want to call it that. One of the things that we had to look at was, you know, hotel availability, transportation uh, to, and, to and from the airport, uh, food, uh, monitoring, all, all the logistics behind that. So when we we're doing that research or study, uh, that's where we came to the conclusion that it's an option, but there's also other options of an additional hub in, in Winnipeg. So nothing's off the table right now, but I just wanted to clarify that, that it's not a done deal, like it's been perceived okay. as. Uh, Dr. Patterson, please. Emma Tranter, Nunatsiak News. Dr. Patterson, CBC reported yesterday that you approved a 14-day isolation plan, self-isolation plan for the Premier. How many other self-isolation plans have you approved for people in the territory? Emma Tranter, Nunatsiak News, CBC. Kutusandalang atako luni 14 ni. Thanks. Uh, the Premier was specifically treated as we have some other uh, private pilots flying in their planes trying to manage uh, the risk in a way that works for everybody. For other people with 
other circumstances involving the need to self-isolate at home. Um, top of my head, probably a couple of dozen at the most. A couple of dozen? Yeah, two dozen in that area. That's how many? 24? Yeah. <laughs> Can the individuals at the mine who tested positive for COVID-19, have you received the results back uh, from the South for those tests? As of 9 o'clock this morning, no. That was some good news to hear. Minister Hicksmo, if I could ask you a couple questions, please. I'm not my question is, how many travelers are there between Winnipeg and Ottawa that are not medical travelers? How many compared to the medical travelers that are considered essential? Uh, basically, I don't have the exact number with me, Pauline. Good to see you here, by the way. Um, right now, approximately 60% of travelers are medical travelers. Uh, and so right now, there's 502. I was going to say around 500, so I was pretty close uh, with the numbers of that. Uh, 262 are public and 240 are medical right now. <laughs> Tako sixty percent of young Itaco and now will have some ayot man now your five hundred two and now will have some ayot to us or to Tamalo two hundred sixty two and now will have some money to Ilacati Lugam Malutaco at two hundred forty was public. Yeah, eh, that two hundred forty medical or two hundred forty and now will have some ayot and Malo and now will have some money to two hundred sixty two. And I guess we're allowed one quick one and a follow. Did, did that change, or I can come back later? Or okay, I didn't know what the system was. Um, kawigo <laughs> So my question is, there's a lot of people on edge and your statement provided that there's not a lot of information that you can provide about the option of Iqaluit being a hub. Lots of people are contacting us. There needs to be some kind of clarification for Inuit to understand what's happening to them in the south and what, what we can expect in Iqaluit. When are you going to provide an update on, on the options? Um, and, and so I was talking with some people this morning, and that's the difficult. Uh, when we look at options, in this case, the, the first people that we wanted to contact were the directly the, with the people that would be affected by it. That would be the medical travelers, even just to see if this is a path worth exploring. Uh, there's a number of different options that we're looking at. And to go through with intimate detail 
out in the public realm with every little aspect of the decision making pro process just doesn't make sense and that's why when I said in my statement earlier that take a look at where the information is coming from and look to us when we do make a decision that's when we'll, we'll communicate the information so that people can know the facts of what they're dealing with. Jackie McKay, CBC News. Dr. Patterson, a couple week, or several weeks ago, I asked about using eCalgate as an isolation hub, and you told me then that it was too risky to do so. Why would it be less risky now? Jackie McKay, CBC, Kuniluta, Patterson, Pinasa, Rosiga, Lausima, Yapri, Lausima, Gaki. Um, that was in reference to using it in as the isolation hub or the major one for uh, Baffin region. The idea that we've been exploring over the weekend has been to make use of uh, Callowit as a one-time short-term isolation site for a couple of weeks to get people to get us through this um, period where there's excess demand for isolation in Winnipeg until we can uh, augment capacity there. Thanks. In your answer to Emma's question about other people not having specific isolation plans, for those people who have isolation plans that aren't through the isolation hubs, what's the criteria for who wouldn't have to go through an isolation hub and who who has to? Um, a lot of it is on a case-by-case -case basis, and, and I understand that that causes um, confusion and, and even anger for private pilots. It's um, less risky if they can isolate outside of town uh, which a few, couple, at least a couple have now. For other people who are coming from other northern circumstances, um, Greenland, for example, um, making them fly all the way south, isolate for two weeks and then come back is not appropriate and may actually increase their risk. So we work, we've worked with uh, people to find isolation plans that work for them in that circumstance. Um, and then there's a number of people who, who have gotten compassionate exemptions because of a very serious illness in the family and we've worked with them to isolate uh, at home and allow uh, accommodations for the illness. Rajni Sharma, Nunavut News. Uh, Minister Hicks, is there any other reason besides the backlog that the GN is considering to have an isolation hub in Iqaluit? 
Rajni Shaman, who now would news good Nick Minister Hicks, as singing the picture to Hakatako, I miss you, learning in Notaki, Esma Sassi, without Lakisima Mataman Nehalui. No, the, the main uh, talk and concern is the backlog of, of having people to wait, uh, specifically medical travel uh, travelers. You go down for your appointment and then you have to wait uh, two, maybe close to three weeks before even getting into the hub. Uh, it's just unsustainable. And can you just clarify, like, exactly how many hubs are there, isolation hubs are there down south, including the hubs for the construction workers? So, okay. so there's one in, I believe, Quebec City for for the construction hubs. Uh, another one in Ottawa for construction, uh, and then a general are, are one that we operated in Ottawa as well. Uh, one in Winnipeg, one in Edmonton, and we still have the hub in Yellowknife as well. Which one? Sorry. Yeah. Oh, is it? Oh, my apologies. Two. So there's actually three in Ottawa. Are you sure? <laughs> yeah, pretty sure. Quebec City may take on a little bit of a toll on you. Not in two weeks, a little bit of a toll on you. Ottawa may take on a little bit of a toll on you. Not in two weeks, a little bit of a toll on you. Not in two weeks, a little bit of a toll on you. Not in two weeks. Winnipeg, Matos, Edmonton, Matos, and Malo Yellowknife, Matos. Kent Driscoll, APTN National News. Uh, Minister Hicks, when someone leaves the isolation hubs in the south, they're leaving into a population that's already exposed. Here in Nunavut, we don't have any COVID-19. If someone was to leave an isolation hub here, they would be entering a population that has been unexposed. Isn't that a really significant risk? Kentus kau ipit ya kau ni tak kau lain yang kau kau makan luna ni tu yang mungkin ni ini tu yang ini ima ulu kau nak temu ane kat tengah tak kisah ni lihat mana ni nuna nuna jual nak tuh hati naga nuna bumi tak kau tiki yang harus majul ulu kau nak temu itu cinga yang ini mata ni tu agai pata. I would agree with you in in the larger context, Kent. In this situation, the travelers would be coming from Manitoba, specifically Winnipeg that have been on medical travel, so there's been a containment of their trip anyway, and Manitoba is a very low uh, low risk jurisdiction right now. They don't have a lot of cases, and I think they've gone through a number of days without any new cases. Uh, Dr. Patterson would probably be able to give you the more scientific methodology behind it, but in general, uh, any, any travel. Uh, brings increased risk. <laughs> Koyami for the interpretation. Uh, Mr. Hicks, in addition to your cabinet portfolios, you're also one of the MLAs for Iqaluit. Do you think the people the, who vote for you here in Iqaluit are going to be accepting of the idea of a medical isolation hub here in the city? Minister Hicks, um, Minister Lutita Maligaliokti, Omega Vitama, Omega Halomionu, I think the only way we would move forward with the Kent is if we had all the, the measures taken into consideration and, and having the facilities agreed upon, the practices uh, similar to what we've done in the other isolation hubs. I think if, if, the, if the risks are mitigated the best we can, 
uh, and it's communicated properly and it's done in collaboration with our partners and stakeholders uh, and it can be done safely, I, I, I think it, yes, at some point we have to start opening things up sooner or later. Now, the more control we have over it right now, obviously, the better. I'm a transgender in Atsiak News. It's July 20th. Um, we're wondering how much money you've given to the airlines uh, for the month of July. I'm a transgender in Atsiak News. July 20th. I'm a transgender in Atsiak News. Uh, it's funny you asked that question. I was just uh, going through some emails this morning on that, Emma. Uh, we haven't given the airlines anything as of yet. Uh, we're still in discussions with Transport Canada and the airlines on uh, coming to a, to a final agreement on, on their support. But I do know the airlines are feeling the crunch. <laughs> The money announced by the federal government last week involves 5.7 million in kind for PPE and testing. What will that mean for Nunavut? Um, and is that being distributed soon? Uh, and we're still figuring out all the details on that, Emma. I, I was actually on the call uh, last week when we were talking about the amounts. And when you look at PPE and testing, we're still building that capacity up, especially from the testing standpoint. So I don't know exactly what that's going to look like yet. Going back to isolation, some of them have to restart. I don't want to ask one question. I want to ask the situation, what's happening there. Uh, it seems to be increasing. People are asking right now on our Facebook page, uh, how are you guys dealing with that situation? with uh, restarting ko kanu ikayong ni lupi ge kanu e humaleong ni lupi he bige kanu hoktu ta vani ani tititeli ta hoktu ani takhuti bige le ha ta mata kanu tam na kamagi yawa uh it really varies on the specific circumstances Pauline. some people uh break their isolation uh maybe have a trip to emergency room uh maybe have issues with the hotel I know the majority of time we've been able to have people restart their isolation and go through successfully. We've had to take some measures of, of changing isolation hubs. We've actually sent people to other cities uh, to get them away from some of the peer uh, challenges, I guess, if you want to call, uh, peer pressure. Uh, the, uh, I'll let Uli get that portion first. One of the big challenges, I guess, are supports that, you know, when 
when somebody has addictions or mental health issues, we want to make sure that we have people there on the ground to be able to support people through their uh, illness or through their situation that they're going through. Uh, other ones are behavioral issues that we are continuing to, to have challenges with. And I, and it, I get a lot of feedback from people that are going through isolation that are, have a high level of frustration uh, from, their, from their fellow residents that, are, that aren't following the rules or, or are very confrontational. And this isn't a punishment. Uh, this is to help keep Nunavut safe that, we're, that we have these isolation hubs in place. And it's not easy. I, I fully acknowledge that. Uh, but it's, it's a responsibility we all have. Uh, to help keep our populations, to help keep our families safe. I know I, for one, would not want to be uh, responsible for getting somebody I love sick. You were talking about um, stress, addictions, uh, where people can go for support. And then just inquiring about uh, follow up with appointments. One of the major issues that have been made noted to me direct messages, personal phone calls, which I'm sure you get, are the mistreatment of Inui. <coughs> they're all connected together so it can't again be one question so i'm trying to think about how i'm going to ask this they sent me a link so when i asked to get answers uh, I was given a link to check. None of it to me as a bilingual person would be helpful uh, with the issues that I see people are facing. So overall, what's being done now, the numbers are growing of medical passengers. Now we're stuck. What's happening now on the ground to help these Inuit if they're unilingual and where do they go? Not onto a computer, not a 1-800 number. Uh, so right now we've uh, contracted with uh, uh, QC uh, to manage the hubs, uh, all, all of the hubs other than the, the contractor ones. Um, at, we feel that that's probably going to help alleviate some of the Having more Inuit involved in the process, having people on the ground at the hubs that are that are Inuit and, and bilingual would be op, 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 optimal. Um, and that's where it, we've had so many resources taken up with health and community government services and, and other government organized agencies and organizations that contracting the service out and bringing Inuit in, into the picture was and is the, the plan to help alleviate a lot of those concerns.
akaw nak pa nga yang ay non nek na yak te kay nak lon ita ko alo gaba mak kun ne pele ge jenge amalo pe jit sa te ko asing illo pe jat sa hanga ta me sune ka me motan na contract ta ko tawse ma yotan na isumalo ti yo no te ta ban le gum nak se khul lo ge Jackie McKay, CBC News. A lot of people on the Facebook feed are asking about how alcohol is being managed in the isolation hubs. We know that a lot of people have had to restart because they've been kicked out because of excess drinking. What is the GN doing to manage alcohol for people who are over drinking in the isolation hubs? Jackie McKay, CBC, Kunni, Kamis, Apple, Hattangata, Facebook, Kutigutaman, Naime, I look at Jutti Gilugo, Ilanga Pigia, Kan Hattara, Hangatani, Tito, Jumini, Mersiman, Lutipitsa, of Nir Domini, Hanuli, Kago, Nunaboga, Makumi, Tamatomoa. Thanks for the question, Jackie. And that's probably been the most challenging aspect of the isolation hubs is the, uh, is the alcohol abuse and some of the behavior that stems from that. One of the things that we have been doing and from the get-go is offering addiction counseling, offering mental health supports uh, to assist people. But like with any uh, addiction or with any behavioral issue, people have to ask for help, for one. Uh, we're, as far as access to alcohol, we, we, we have very little control over that. Uh, when people are medical travelers, they sign an agreement, but general population of if you and I were going through a hub and we want to have a glass of wine with dinner, we were entitled to do that. Thank you. My next question is for Dr. Patterson. How many people have been um, allowed arrangements like the one the Premier has gotten for isolation? And can you specifically address that we're letting people in from Greenland, like you said before? Lutha Thayrusen had said that they may not be able to get the necessary equipment, so Lutha is also willing to do that. They go to some local malls to get the necessary equipment. I can't. I don't, off the top of my head, I don't know how many exactly have been given the same arrangement uh, as the premier. Um, for the other circumstance, a question, yes, an individual passed through Greenland and uh, had uh, an arrangement to isolate in Nunavut. And making that individual go all the way to Ottawa, isolate for 14 days and then come back uh, made no sense and increased the risk to that individual without um, furthering the protection of Nunavumiut. And we do have arrangements in place for fisheries crew and others to be able to return, to apply for exemptions and return from Greenland when the time comes. I don't know how many that will be though. Rajni Sharma, Nunavut News. 
<clears throat> Mr. Hicks, the behavior of some of the isolating guests down south, has that affected how much space has now become available in the hubs? Rasni Sharman of New School, Minister Hicks, Takwa, Nala Chair, Tarsaman, Nipiti, Lugino, to Kainara, Hatu, to you, maybe you need Hanuki, Yabber, to Tarsima, Vain, Harun, Nirsaman. To a certain degree, yes, uh, especially when somebody has to restart. Uh, that's that's a room that should have been cleared that is obviously not available anymore. Uh, that's been one of the real challenges of assisting with the scheduling. Uh, why we wanted people to register as early as possible when they know their travel plans so that rooms can be allocated uh, as needed. We have seen a, a bump uh, with medical travel, especially as more jurisdictions are opening up their medical treatments that are available. It has increased the, the medical travel and people have been waiting quite a long period of time. So, yes. You mentioned previously that if someone's not behaving well, they can move to a different hotel or a different hub. What happens in the case if you do have an isolation hub here in the Callaway and people are not behaving well? What will happen to them? And that's uh, one of the questions that as we go through this whole process uh, that we need to answer even for ourselves. Uh, like I said, there, there was a, a lot of work done over the weekend on examining Yuzidi Kaluida as a temporary hub. But at the same time, uh, like I said, we haven't made that decision, and that would be part of the options that we would have to look at and issues that we would have to consider. Kent Driscoll, APTN National News. Uh, Dr. Patterson, have you approved alternative isolation methods for any other elected officials? Kent Driscoll, APTN, Kunik Luta Patterson, I sing in the Ilang, and still also my Vinero Tows in my union or two can not to tell you in Miko. Not that I know of. There may have been others. There's a few people working on approvals, and I've been trying to stay out of it so that I'm not um, interfering. But not that I know of. Just to no, clarify on that, in, and I know it's in my name, but because of that perception and that that um, worry that being a public figure or face over the last couple of months. Um, to try and make it less arbitrary. There's a group of people behind who are doing a lot of those reviews and taking care of that work. Um, and so I for when I get direct requests, I forward them to them and I steer people towards that email and most of the time have nothing to do with it on a day-to-day -day basis at this point. <laughs> Months ago, when the medical travel hubs, the isolation hubs, opened, 
one of us asked you about uh, the idea of isolating on the land. Why can't people self-isolate on the land like the Premier's doing? And your answer at that time was, what if the person developed symptoms while isolating? Why wasn't that a concern with the Premier's self-isolation? I think when I answered that, we hadn't fully thought out the implications for private pilots and planes that can land pretty much anywhere. And it takes a bit to explain, but if we make a pilot isolate in the hubs for 14 days and then they hop on a plane and we did this once early on, we have no idea where they've gone or when they arrive in the community, there was a lot of concern about could they have picked up COVID along the way, could they have diverted in their flight path. And then the doesn't make sense and it's almost like punishing them if you say isolate in the hubs for 14 days, fly and then isolate again at home or elsewhere. And so we've tried to find a way to strike that balance that uh, respects their rights to travel and uh, still protects Nunavut. Thanks. Tätä samaa niitä mennä keuvakko, jos maa lukilo alas samaan näitä kuuta makkoa, nämä minä hankata juuri ahotingit, nämä tuin nämä tuin nämä kun näkty, tai ma ahotimme fourteen neulun ei nuttu ja hattit sikäin näkutta, haja maga jangin näitä nämä munga hattak samaan munga, ammal utikit ne kanun alle ne samaa lunna gajah suni, tai ma nuva joan näkutta hangi kalua munga, tai ma tuut ja haja jangin ma tammalo. I'm a transgender and unsafe news. What's the difference between people who are approved to come in without isolating through compassionate grounds versus the situation of the Premier where he had an isolation plan? I'm a the people getting a compassionate exemption are, are being approved. Um, they're still expected to isolate at home, but we're not doing um, the perfect or thorough review of their circumstances. We're bringing them back knowing that they face, uh, you know, Either they or a family member faces a significant, even terminal illness and needs support in that. And then we work with them to minimize the risk to other Nunavomia in by supporting them at home. This might be a question for Minister Hicks. Um, I'm just wondering, school starts pretty soon in some communities. Do you have any idea of how many teachers are either in the isolation hubs right now or expected to enter? Minister Hicks, that coil in our Bema, Nagalumatu, Lalam, Matai, Lagamatu, Sahin, the Saulu, the Hatchi, the Kail in our Tichi, to your maybe meet to. We're not tracking that as far as uh, what profession people are coming through as. Uh, they'd be as general public travelers. Taco, Nalona Pele, Hatangi Tabukisuni, Kanaya, Hamanga, Tainu, to be meet to okay, not to be any, you know, who meet to in our Tito Nalona Tos Mahatatu. Mobility rights, human rights. So I'm asking about 
are you revisiting this and are you considering that this right to mobility is affecting the human rights to health and safety in Aqaluit now if you're considering a hub and it should take precedence and ask people to, to, to stop traveling? Since the hubs are overflowing, what can the government do or what will you do to ask people to stay put? We have been saying from the get-go, I know the Premier and I and Dr. Patterson have sat here countless times over the last few months uh, stressing that non-essential travel uh, should really be uh, examined and explored within yourself. To, do you really need to go? Uh, like I said before, I've ch I've changed my travel trips this, this summer. I, I don't want to risk, like I said earlier, I do not want to be responsible for getting somebody that I care about sick or even potentially fatal. Uh, so we, we have to really take a look at what we're doing and why we're doing it. Uh, I understand there are needs, there are people that do need to leave the territory, but I just ask that everyone take a real solid reflection on whether they really do need to leave or not. Kisi <laughs> You said you were having the discussion with Patterson and Premier Vikatak about staying put. Even our own Premier is on a holiday right now. People people are responding to it and there's different opinions about it. If our leaders aren't following it, how will others? So my question was, what are you guys going to do from the GN department point of view to stop people from traveling? if it's risking other people's health and safety within Nunavut or with medical passengers. So, um, I don't know how to ask it again, where does this, does the government not have the right to say, don't travel, stop, temporary? And that's where the, the challenge comes in, Pauline. So we have uh, removed the restriction in territory uh, where people can travel freely within the territory and with NWT. Or if Jackie wants to book her canoe trip, she can now. Um, but at the same time, we, we do have to be very cognizant of uh, what hardships that we're, that we're putting on people. Uh, so we can control what, how people return to the territory we can't control how people leave. Uh, that's why we've put the hubs in place, so that we can help protect Nunavimu. And I think the government has done a fantastic job. Uh, actually, I'll, I'll let Uli start with that. You're confusing me. So any exceptions to the isolation hub itself have been examined, like Dr. Patterson just explained, through a team of health professionals to determine the risk associated with the travel plan, the isolation plan, uh, those measures. Um, and when we look at from our standpoint, and I'm sure the Premier will, will address it himself, uh, but at the same time, uh, it, it would be like somebody going to pick up a boat uh, that they bought that they're using to hunt to provide for their family. Uh, we would have to have strict measures in place uh, to make sure that you know, if they go pick that boat up outside the territory to bring it back, how they would return. Uh, there has been a number of examples that Dr. Patterson has stated 
uh, that the people can apply for, the, for these exceptions to make sure that they're done safely. And that's the whole point of, like I said, where I think we've done a great job, or Dr. Patterson and his team have done a great job, of analyzing uh, those requests and evaluating the risk associated with them, sometimes saying yes, sometimes saying no. Okay. I'm done. Good. <laughs> Takwalo <laughs> So, Lomer Major Major Canon of Silata Nick Maligaling in the Malita Kayata, Gunnar Titsigata, Emaluta, Paris and Motututsira, Gunnar to Anger Tauke in Romalone, Ulura and Artomated Sijang, it's a real to our part. Taco Billy Matalota, Paris and Pillar Hatting in Low. Hemiko Hatta Sutti to Sirauti or Unic, Ulura and Artome Gutting in Lota Manga Hatta, Narto Ilan de Coaga Hatta on Narsoni. Jackie McKay, CBC News. Um, earlier you said that the Nunavut government is working with uh, the Kikatala Corporation with something to do with the isolation hubs. Can you clarify what you meant by that? Jackie McKay, CBC News. So I'd, I'd actually announced, I believe, two weeks ago or a week ago that it was one of the things we're looking at and we have finalized a contract with QC uh, to operate the isolation hubs. Are you done? Mm, sorry, just one moment. Um, can you give us an update on what specifically uh, QC would be doing in those hubs? To start the cigar of Nakirhanulata, Hikatal Cooperation, Kohanulata, Namangata, Tamakuna, and to your review unit. Uh, basically the same thing we were doing before, uh, providing boots uh, like a, a physical presence uh, that can help people navigate through any concerns or any issues that they have uh, to access services like mental health, uh, work in coordinating with our health staff, uh, just the general oversight of, of, the, of the hub itself. Rajni Sharma, Nunavut News. Okay, the isolation hubs have been in place since March. Um, just to be clear, has anyone ever tested positive for COVID since the beginning of the isolation hubs? Uh, while we have had a couple instances of people testing positive while out on medical travel, uh, we have not had any positive cases stemming from any of the hubs. Do you have an update of how much money has been spent on the isolation hubs up to this point? I don't have that uh, number right now with me, Rajnesh. Um, 
There's, and that's one of the complicated factors when we do report how much money we've spent. We're always behind because there's still invoices and, and billing cycles to take into consideration. But uh, I guess I, I'm getting a rough number here, approximately $15 million as of last week. Um. Danila na lo nang akyu kaso ang asid chak tapal lang in nang atak ko lo akilit sa na lakang ikingo bakatang atak ikingo baksimay na katag at fifteen fifteen million fifteen million ullo mimo. And if I may just add to that quickly, like when we look at what we're spending from a fiscal standpoint, we're trying to do our best to keep our residents safe, and that's where we need the cooperation of the people that are going through the hubs to recognize that they have an obligation as well to to keep their community safe. And I, I can't stress enough that the additional stress it puts on people traveling when uh, there, there's violence in some cases or people uh, uh, berating staff or uh, breaking their own isolation to for their own selfish reasons in, in some cases. But I do acknowledge there are mental health and addictions issues that we're I, I hope people ask for help. Ilagay ang lugar at sumuwa tama ko kaya na yung lugar mo ilagay yao tuin nang at tana si Bulak pa uting inatigo kisay niya at sao tika at tao lugar na tumitit si tayo liga sa asuta tayo may matagko ika yung at tao siya kaya yung galaw na tuyo may win may kaya na at tao tuyo malit siya kaya kagalawang at tama ko ay lugar na tumitit si lugar na git. Tak mahu kerja kan ni nak kata kau mayung, tak mahu balik saya kata kau lugu. Ila ni kau anak tiri yo kalim mahu kata ngat, amalu kena yak tining suang ayunik, amalu balik tau gali nasi kumit saya kata sutik. Isu malu kena muka kau gali roti liar, yo liar roti kasih mayu lugu. Ika yok tau gua kata kau malau le. Emma Tranter, New Zealand News. How much are you paying the Kikatala Corporation to run the isolation hubs? Ema trying to know na check on ni kanu tiki kina o yani atos ma visa kaya talo cooperation ka na chiti gap tau tilogi. Thanks, Emma. I'd have to check the exactly. I believe it's about two hundred and thirty thousand dollars a month. I can't remember the exact day ratio, but that's the the round number that comes comes to mind. Kaya nami tanda how you get kani ka legal o kaya kisay ni two hundred thirty thousand takita mat ay magalakili. And just that does cover uh, positions as well too. That positions? they're that they're higher positions. Positions or positions. Positions. Thank you. Let's have a look at how many people have you joined. Emma. Thanks, everyone.